Hello, fellow heirs, and welcome back to Weekday Wind Down with the Word, where we are reading through the book of Numbers. And today we'll be reading the 35th chapter of Numbers in the NLT version. This chapter includes towns for the Levites as well as cities of refuge. So without any further delay, let's start reading. Towns for the Levites. While Israel was camped beside the Jordan on the plains of Moab, across from Jericho, the Lord spoke to Moses. Command the people of Israel to give the Levites from their property certain towns to live in, along with the surrounding pasture land. These towns will be for the Levites to live in, and the surrounding lands will provide pasture for their cattle, flock, and other livestock. The pasture land assigned to the Levites around these towns will extend 1,500 feet from the town walls in every direction. Measure off 3,000 feet outside the town walls in every direction, east, south, west, and north, with the towns at the center. This area will serve as the larger pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge, where a person who accidentally kills someone can flee for safety. In addition, give them 42 other towns. In all, 48 towns with the surrounding pasture land will be given to the Levites. These towns will come from the property of the people of Israel. The larger tribes will give more towns to the Levites, while the smaller tribes will give fewer. Each tribe will give property in proportion to the size of its land. Cities of Refuge The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instruction to the people of Israel. When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, designate cities of refuge to which people can flee if they have killed someone accidentally. These cities will be places of protection from a dead person's relative who want to avenge their death. The slayer must not be put to death before being tried by the community. Designate six cities of refuge for yourselves three on the east side of the Jordan River, and three on the west in the land of Canaan. These cities are for the protection of Israelites, foreigners living among you, and traveling merchants. Anyone who accidentally kills someone may flee there for their safety. But if someone strikes and kills another person with a piece of iron, it is murder, and the murderer must be executed. Or if someone with a stone in his hand strikes and kills another person, it is murder, and the murderer will be put to death. Or if someone strikes and kills a person with a wooden object, it is murder, and the murderer must be put to death. The victim's nearest relative is responsible for putting the murderer to death. When they meet, the avenger must put the murderer to death. So if someone hates another person and waits in ambush, then pushes him or throws something at him and he dies, it is murder. Or if someone hates another person and hits him with a fist and he dies, it is murder. In such cases, the avenger must put the murderer to death when they meet. But suppose someone pushes another person without having shown previous hostility or throws something that unintentionally hits another person or accidentally drop a huge stone on someone. Though they were not enemies and the person dies, if this should happen, the community must follow these regulations in making a judgment between the slayer and the avenger the victim's nearest relative. The community must protect the slayer from the avenger and must escort the slayer back to live in the city, a refuge to which he fled. There he must remain until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the sacred oil. But if the slayer ever leaves the limits of the city of refuge, and the avenger finds him outside the city and kills him, 
it will not be considered murder. The slayer should have stayed inside the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer may return to his own property. These are the legal requirements for you to observe from generation to generation, wherever you may live. All the murderers must be put to death, but only if evidence is presented by more than one witness. No one may be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Also, you must never accept a ransom payment for the life of someone judged guilty of murder and subject to execution. Murderers must always be put to death and never accept a ransom payment from someone who has fled to a city of refuge, allowing a slayer to return to his property before the death of the high priest. This will ensure that the land where you live will not be polluted, for a murderer pollutes the land. And no sacrifice except the execution of the murderer can purify the land from murder. You must not defile the land where you live, for I live there myself. I am the Lord who lives among the people of Israel. And that concludes the reading of Numbers 35 in the NLT version. So one of the things I notice in this particular chapter is the compassion of the Lord and that he uh, made cities a refuge for those that accidentally kill someone so that they can be protected. protected. And I just thought that was so wonderful of the Lord. Our God is so just. You know, it, it's just really awesome that he made that provision for people because he know that there was gonna, he knew that there was gonna be some people that accidentally kill someone and they shouldn't be penalized for it when they accidentally kill someone. But, you know, sometimes our emotions aren't that, you know, don't think with clarity like that. You know, when uh, someone, loved one is killed, all they can think about sometimes is getting back at the person that killed them, whether it was by mistake or intentionally. So uh, I thought this chapter was very awesome in this, you know, and it just lets you know that, you know, if God can make a way of escape for them, then we should be able to forgive them, you know, when they accidentally um, kill someone. But to forgive them anyway, you know, especially if we are of Christ. But, you know, uh, this scripture's telling about God making a way for them to um, keep from being killed themselves. Just let you know that we should have compassion for one another and we should really consider the situation um, in its entirety. So with that being said, I'm going to leave it right here. And as usual, I'd like to hear your thoughts on chapter 35. Please make sure you put it in the comments below. And thank you once again for listening to Weekday Wind Down with the Word. And have a nice life in Jesus Christ. And continue to be blessed. Bye.